Boom. Hello lads, currently in the Netherlands at an Erkenbrand conference with my friend Fauster and uh, yeah we were talking yesterday about a lot of things, primarily the environmentalist question because we've seen all over Europe massive climate protests so yeah we thought to just uh, sit down here in beautiful nature and talk a bit about that yeah. so yeah welcome to the channel Faust no, thank you very much we've met before yeah we do we have uh, in 2017 yeah. it was a glorious trip also to the Netherlands so uh, and now I'm back good good people this uh, these guys so, yeah, uh, yeah 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 although I'm not I'm also as a guest here I have to emphasize I'm uh, yeah well, it's, it's like a sport event we're at yeah yeah, so I'm gonna hold a speech as well, uh, hold some training, we'll good good stuff yeah. and uh, yeah, beautiful place. So anyway, we have seen uh, you know a new, almost a religious fervor among the youth. Um, With one part. of your country, man. Yeah, exactly, Greta Thunberg. Uh, and I mean, a lot of guys want to counter signal her. For me, it's like, you know, she's bringing attention to some problem. They're focusing a bit on the wrong thing, which is uh, CO2, uh, yeah. but she also has the power of certain. Some of these individuals might end up looking into it deeper. So, what would you say is a good next step for the more inquisitive of, of those well, youths? It's. Uh, I think the CO2 thing is kind of used as a distraction, right? It's like, okay, I, I don't want to say that it's it doesn't happen or anything, but I think it's a fairly less significant point than, for example, more direct issues that are easily more easily solvable, like the plastic in the oceans yeah. issue. Uh, chemical pollution in China and then the main argument anyway against air pollution is that uh, here in the Netherlands uh, like in America with the Green New Deal and so on they've proposed legislation where they want to invest a thousand billion dollars like that is roughly uh, a year and a half worth of our entire GDP mm. into climate change uh, like stopping CO2 and uh, energy transition and new technologies and so on uh, but we are a very small country. Mm. If you compare our what we put into the air in terms of CO2, monoxide, all this, it's nothing compared to China and India. And yeah. that's part of the mainstream discussion here. We're saying like, okay, we are going to invest, like, everyone's going to work for free for 15 months mm -hmm. for this stuff, like everyone in the Netherlands, every company, every person, and what's going to be the impact on the, the environment. Yeah. Yeah, the same thing for Sweden when uh, they talk about, you know, the population of Sweden needs to drive less car. Uh, then again, Sweden also, and a smaller country than the Netherlands, a uh, smaller impact on the um, CO2 question. And then you have China who's just completely ignoring exactly. these sort of things. So, uh, in my view, yeah, it's they're punishing the countryside population in, uh, in the countries that okay. care. And their policies are contradictory because at the one time, they're trying to solve poverty in the third world, but by solving poverty in the third world, you increase consumption. Yeah. You, if you uplift uh, the, the masses of Africa and, and, and Asia into the middle class, and you give them access to cars and homes, there's no way that, that, that the entire 7 billion people on this earth can live on a sustainable level, on the same level as we live in, in Western Europe. In fact, we in Western Europe are probably living far too decadently. Yeah. We're going to have to reduce some of our consumption and one of the main things that you never hear the left about of course is overpopulation yeah it's the simplest ma math equation you can have the more consumers there are the more demand there is for products the more pollution and uh, extraction there is of resources right yeah yeah and exactly in in africa the main uh, culprit so to speak in regards to overpopulation it's a quite easy thing to understand that the more humans there are the less animals there will be because humans take territory uh, and when they take more territory less trees because they cut it down to uh, build fires basically yeah. uh, and uh, something to keep in mind too is that when the desert spreads um, the e ecosystem takes a hit uh, and who knows what will happen when one unique flower or insect or uh, frog or whatever it might be when that disappears it may have catastrophic consequences. Yeah. Uh, so, but of course, it's very controversial, political incorrect to say that Africans needs to have fewer children. Well, but the it is, is the it, truth. It was part of uh, up to the environmentalist agenda to talk about overpopulation up until about the 1970s, mm. and then it was dropped as a talking point because political correctness, and yeah. cultural Marxism, came up as like the, the dominant narratives and these sort of things. And overpopulation doesn't suit with the social agendas. And I find this very often with the left that they have very contradictory agendas. Yeah, because 
like with the climate deal that they propose here, they have a point in that they are saying like uh, the, the reasoning is wrong. Like they're saying we have to reduce CO2 and therefore we have to go to more green energies. I think the main reason to do so isn't the CO2, but is the economics behind it. Mm. Oil extraction, like this is a bit of a meme talking about peak oil. There is going to be a point of peak oil at some point and we can't quite predict when and maybe we have a few decades, maybe we have another century of oil. Mm. The point is oil is not an infinite resource and you do have to start incalculating that into your economy. And currently our economy is entirely reliant on cheap energy. We With shale oil from in the US for example, which is heavily subsidized by the way, mm. but they get about 10 barrels of oil out of every barrel invested. Mm. So that's a 10 on 1 investment return. That's it's already quite a lot lower than it was in the 1960s. For example, when uh, the first oil was in, in Iran, where drill was 24 to 1. Uh, mm. uh, it was even higher in Texas in the original oil boom and so on. So oil extraction has been reducing, but it's still profitable. Mm. But uh, it will get more harder and harder to extract the oil. So maybe at some point we still have oil, but it will cost as much oil to get it yeah. as to as it. You know, it's, it's a one-on-one -on -one, uh, relation. And at that point, it's no point to do mm. it because you're basically throwing money away. Yeah. So we do need to start planning for an economy and a system that can deal with that. And the side effect might be that it's greener. Yeah. And the thing that people suggest always is, is more electric, uh, relying on electricity, solar panels, electrical cars, these sorts of things, windmills. Now, I, uh, in my work, I deal with, with electricity and sort of related things a lot. So there's already quite a lot of research on how to get um, neighborhoods to mm. work independently on just solar panels. Yeah. That's already quite an investment. To mm. get a neighborhood to have sufficient solar panels and to have its entire like uh, underground system and uh, transformator houses and everything yeah. rerouted so that it's independent, that's quite a lot of an investment. But your main point there is uh, storage. Yeah. You need to store that energy for, for when there's little sun or at night. And uh, that's a bit tricky because the most efficient batteries we have are lithium, mm. lithium batteries, which is you have in your phone. But you also need those for cars. Mm. Uh, Teslas, for example, have lithium batteries. Mm -hmm. Lithium is all mined pretty much in Africa, and there's a fairly, fairly small amount on Earth, so there's not enough to replace all cars. Mm -hmm. I did some math on this. There's about eight and a half million cars in circulation in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. The worldwide electrical car production at the moment is around 1.1 million cars per year worldwide. Mm -hmm. That production might be ramped up, but even then, it would take 10 years to replace the entire car in the Netherlands alone. Yeah. And due to economic scale reasons, it's obviously logical that's not going to happen th mm -hmm. that fast. So you're, and then you learn up to the physical limit of how many cars can you build with the lithium we have on Earth. Yeah. Yeah. So the logical conclusion is you're going to have to reduce the amount of cars in circulation, and what kind of cars are you going to use? Because you, you're going to have to give certain priorities within your economy. Mm. People are going to have to accept that it's not going to be as common for normal people to simply own a car for private transportation. That's one part of it. The other part of lithium mining is, of course, it's extremely polluting in Africa itself. Mm. Huge pit mines, that uh, child labor, all the, you know... If you look at a lot of the raw materials that we use for our advanced technologies like cobalt, lithium, uh, even simpler things like gold and, and iron, mm. they're mined in Bangladesh, in Africa, in, in the Colombia by child labor in extremely poor conditions. Yeah. We've basically just outsourced all of our child labor to the, to the mm. third world. We're still using third child yeah. labor. <laughs> Yeah, so um, if we're talking about reducing the uh, transportation, because, uh, yeah, as we talked about earlier off camera, the, the reason we can have a global economy is that it's so cheap to transport. All production has been outsourced, or not all. Um, obviously, I have clothing in, in Europe still, <laughs> shilling for my own brand there. Uh, yeah, but so much of the production is going to China and uh, Bangladesh and India because it's still cheap to just have it transported back here. So yes. a green nationalist um, economic platform would obviously be to focus a bit more on uh, on production in, in our own countries. Yeah, because it, it's, it's a logical thing. At the moment we basically, okay, there's two factors in why it's cheap to produce in China. There's absolutely no regulations. If you want to go to live leaks and look up the kind of industrial disasters and poor infrastructure they have in China, you can, you can have yourself a will of a time. <laughs> and then there's the cheap, very cheap oil. Uh, these two factors make it so that we can produce all of our clothing and all our uh, heavy industry in China, all our steel and everything. But if, uh, especially if the cheap uh, oil goes away, or if, for example, another factor might be we have oil for a while, but the Chinese start demanding good labor conditions and better wages. Mm. Well, but then what? At, at some point, you run out of third world countries to ship your industry to. Yeah. Yeah. But oil, so, like looking at the oil thing, 
these mass oil tankers, you can't replace oil really with anything, except perhaps nuclear. Mm. But it's, it's incredibly expensive to start outfitting all your big car cargo ships with nuclear reactors like they have on aircraft carriers or nuclear submarines. Mm. That's not an option. Solar panels are not functional. So there's possibly there's a lot of research you could do. I'm not an engineer, so maybe there's technologies you could do, have to replace uh, oil within international shipping. But for the moment, there is nothing. Mm. Uh, so you. Part of this new environmental agenda, I think, is you have to reroute your entire economy back to a more local level. Yeah. And I'm in favor of a very distributist model of economics. If anyone knows, distributism was the solution proposed by the Catholic Church against socialism and liberalism in the 19th century. Mm -hmm. And it's focused on local economics, small-scale businesses. And I think that's the best model to work. And the only reason is that we have these mega corporations is because of all this cheap and easy transportation. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if transportation becomes more expensive, then you're going to have to source a lot of your produce more locally. You're going to have to source a lot of your raw materials and labor more locally. This will drive wages up, this will drive demand up for, for labor. So that's, that's part of uh, a, like a proper economic, economic and environmental platform. These two are very interlinked, economics yeah. and ecology, I think. And to, um, that, that should be like a nationalist talking point and, and point to, to research more and debate more about is how are we going to restructure our economy um, and in, to function with ecologically friendly uh, yeah. policies uh, and to compete with the left because I think the left talks a lot about the environment but they talk nonsense and they mm. never talk about the important issues. It's always doomsday scenarios about CO2 and the solutions they propose are often well, the electrical cars, they, they're basically saying, I will just replace everything with electric cars. It's impossible to replace every mm. car with an electrical car. It's incredibly expensive to... If you're going to have every neighborhood rely on solar panels and electrical cars, you're going to have to upgrade your entire power grid, and significantly. All your ground cables are going to have to be pulled out of the ground and, and, and thickened, mm. just to handle all the extra power. Power generation is another issue. Solar panels might work for homes, but heavy industry and mass consumption is not as efficient. You mm. need to you need to fill fields and fields and fields of them. Then windmills uh, run to the same problem you get with car batteries. They rely on neodymium and other magnetic metals for the uh, core mm. of the engine. And we also have a physically limited supply of that on it. We might be able to fill the entire North Sea with windmills, mm. but the average windmill only generates 40 kilowatts hour. Mm. Now nuclear power centrals generate 2,000. Um, so. Nuclear power would be an actual solution, and there's technologies like uh, dual fluoride reactors and thorium, which China is researching, and we're not because we've got this paranoia about nuclear, yeah. which we can blame on the left. And left always against nuclear. Well, yeah. nuclear, if you want to switch your entire system to an el electrical system, like you want more uh, public transportation on electricity, you want your cars on electricity, all this, then you need nuclear. Yeah. You basically cannot generate enough power otherwise. Or coal, coal power centrals is still an option because we have considerably more coal than we have oil. Mm. But then again, you're still basing it on a non-renewable resource, right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. So a typical leftist thing is this going out onto the streets demanding that someone else does something. Yes. Uh, and this is semi-visible threat, uh, CO2, uh, global warming, that sort of stuff. Someone else needs to do something. These uh, rich white men in corporations need to take the responsibility, but it's never ever about taking responsibility for yourself. And this is so, it's leftist environmentalism, same thing as when it comes to being a victim in society. It's always someone else's fault, someone else has to do it. And uh, as a right-wing environmentalist, we obviously want to look at, okay, what can we start with? Yeah. What can we do ourselves? Well, so I'm a vegetarian, for example. I've been yeah. for a very long time. I've, all, I've, I've been an environmentalist longer than I've been in any way, other way political. Mm. And uh, yeah, it, it does, like, I try to avoid using a uh, car when necessary. I try to use public transportation, try to not consume uh, as much as uh, other people sometimes do. Mm. And so I have to say, there are non-hypocritical leftists who do live by this, right? Who yeah. are like, they have a hippie lifestyle or... There yeah, are the, some, but true. the vast majority, like if I look at the typical voter of the green left in this country, they're a student who uh, lives off Burger King and uh, sodas and uh, they basically they, they live like a deck in a middle class lifestyle. Yeah, and I, I will be fair to some leftists as well, the hippie types who yeah. actually live outside, they do permaculture, yeah. uh, they are very close to, to nature, they have a minimalistic uh, impact upon uh, you know just consumption. So if we're talking about, for me personally, I'm more concerned with plastic pollution, uh, hormonal pollution, yeah. a lot of women who are on uh, the pill 
gets out into the drinking water and turns the um, uh, fish into having uh, two genders basically. Uh, yeah, they, there was they, a study they do in the Sweden. Alex Jones meme. Uh. Yeah, it's really it's a meme turning the frogs gay, but it's also to a certain extent true. And if my wish then would be all these young women who are out protesting ab against climate change, if they could look at themselves, uh, I don't know how many of those are on the pill. I, I have no idea. But if they knew the environmental impact that has on there are so many um, talking points that never get put into the mission. It's always the doomsday CO2 stuff. Yeah. Sometimes you hear a little bit about plastics in the oceans. I have to say that there's not enough focus on it. And it's all focused too much on the West. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I will give a shout out. There, there's a company, an Australian or American, I'm, I'm not sure. I will link them below uh, for Ocean. Uh, their business model is they're selling uh, bracelets. I actually have one myself. For because I want to support them, they go around just cleaning up uh, plastic. They have <laughs> uh, boats, basically, nice. uh, in, in river um, uh, outlets, etc. Just cleaning up. Uh, and I know there are some guys researching you know, automatic uh, collectors of, of garbage. And uh, so that's when I look at upon Mother Earth, etc. It's just uh, plastic uh, pollution, one huge thing. Um, and again, I've said this in many videos because obviously it's quite tiresome for European or Western men to always get the blame and then we look at who is actually polluting the most when it comes to just throwing China, stuff India. into... Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, the, the ten most uh, polluted rivers are not here. So. To counter the doomsday thing as well, the Earth is a closed system. <clears throat> All the energy that comes in uh, gets used. It's a closed system, nothing really comes out. Um, so yeah, plastics are still a product, although transformative, of Earth. And what you'll see that uh, eventually there will be bacteria that will evolve to be able to consume plastics. Mm. So nature will not be destroyed. At most, it will be transformed. We don't have the same animals we have now that we did 10,000 years ago. Species come and go and die, and I think there's something of a like reactionary conservative attitude sometimes towards nature where they think we should keep it as just as it is today mm. but that's just not the truth of how nature works we as people aren't even the same people we were a thousand years ago we've selected yeah. and self-domesticated in ways uh, and we are transforming the earth and that's not we're going to stop species that uh, we cannot use are going to disappear that's simply the truth of it mm. and I would like to add to this also a critique of Ted Kaczynski a little bit in that he says the industrial revolution is a disaster for mankind yes perhaps but it's also irrevertible you can't blow it up because even if you were to kill most of the scientists and you blow up all the power grids and so on there are still so many libraries and hard drives full of technology and there are so many engineers and professors walking around that if in a, in a case of a, of a complete reset of society you'd have a base level of technological knowledge that would jump the start society again if you look at the roman empire when the roman empire fall, fell it didn't revert all the way back to, mm. the, to the neolithic the church is still preserving some knowledge and so on yeah another point against kaczynski is he looks at it at a very individual level and the problem is if one group is still bad at technology, say the West says, okay, Kaczynski is right, we're going to stop with this whole technology thing, we're going back to a feudal society. Mm. The Chinese aren't. No. Yeah, They'll exactly. They'll take us over. Yeah, it's, uh, technology, technology is an arms race, and you have to take that into account. If you dr ha drop the edge, another group will conquer you. Look at what we did when we had gunpowder and sailing ships and the rest of the world yeah. did not. Yeah, definitely. And also, it's about what, what kind of people are we? Are we explorers going forward, or are we regressing for me personally yeah we are in a bad predicament right now do we want to go back or do we want to go forward no we want to use technology to get through these problems yes. so it's uh, I don't want to say we need more technology but we need to use technology to our advantage so I don't say I don't think it's a bad idea that we sit here with a nice camera and uh, with a yeah when I upload this uh, people all over the world can see this I absolutely love that fact and uh, we can spread some good message perhaps um, and when I talked about the four ocean uh, initiative they use technology to uh, yes. To clean the up only, the things, only solution basically. to our problems is to develop technologies to so solve it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you can develop more environmentally friendly technologies, but the solution isn't to completely abandon technology. No, yeah. solution has many, many different aspects. Uh, so, anyway, uh, so to end on a uh, 
and I like what can we do note. We have a lot of leftists or default normies slash leftists who are out now young young people who are you know probably most of them are good people. Yeah. Uh, heart on the right place and they see uh, you know mother nature is in danger. How do we as um, right wing environmentalists how do we get them to, to our cause? Do you have any any, um, I any think, thoughts on that? Um, the main thing is just you, you we can win the argument right mm. the question is the platform getting a platform to speak it mm. so i think that if you uh firstly what we need to do is amongst our own ranks to work out certain talking points like we have these talking points about race we have these standardized little talking points that we would be uh, that everyone knows to repeat like they're sort of like a meme right yeah. like uh, race and IQ and uh, sports uh, mm. uh, sport differences in height and uh, all, the, all these like uh, SNPs these talking little talking points that people that don't even fundamentally understand what the reasoning behind it is they can still repeat them yeah so we're doing to do the same thing sort of with an environmentalist and economical platform for the right is to have these little talk point talking point memes that the, even the 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 most basal follower can yeah repeat. buy local for yeah, example yeah. buy local support your local ec economy support your these local farmer things, yeah yeah Th these sorts of things but th that's so we need to work on that platform work on these sorts of uh, memeable ideas um, and I think that's a project for for a while we need to work on you know develop an actual proper platform yeah and then find p places where you can talk, talk about it uh, yeah. YouTube is one but also the public square and uh, in politics and so on yeah yeah so uh, good good stuff and uh, yeah it's uh, something as I said I will continue talking a bit more about this uh, because it's important and because if we want to form a complete worldview, a complete uh, political platform or cultural platform, uh, we need to have everything in order. Yeah. It's, it's not enough to just talk about, oh, this group of immigrants are bad or Islam is it, bad. It we comes need to because have a, it's resentful. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's like we, uh, we base our worldview upon ourselves. We don't base our worldview upon being the opposite of leftists or the opposite of Muslims. It's like they are who they are, we are who we are form our own platform here. Uh, we try to make it as congruent with mother nature as possible, uh, both uh, actual nature and the, I the think metaphysical. That's, I think that's part. the whole thing about rightist politics, is you're trying to stick as close as possible to natural law. Yeah. That, is, that isn't to say that some things can't be changed by human hand, mm. but some things also can't. Like human, uh, what human behavior can be Change somewhat to self-selection. We've done that as mm. Europeans. We've uh, reduced our aggressiveness and so on. We've, high, low, we've uh, upped our IQ. Basically, the, watch alternative hypes uh, European Revolution video. Mm. He's got a very good material on this. But the, and self-domestication talking points from the HPD community. Um, so there are some things we can change, but human nature still has points that, if we are to change it, we become a different species practically. Yeah. And yet those points are immutable. And the same thing with certain things in nature. There's, there's certain laws of, of gravity and motion that you cannot change. And yeah. that's right-wing politics is trying, I think, to tr stick to as close as possible to the natural law and to say, okay, this is immutable and unchangeable. This is what works best. And that's why we should, what we should base our politics on. Yeah, definitely. And uh, yes, end on that note for me personally i talk a lot about self-improvement so obviously for me i don't want to be deterministic in any way shape or form i always think you can change your own situation but also being realistic about it if you are 160 you will never become a pro basketball player but yeah. you might be good at something else so it's about believing in yourself doing everything you can to better your position but also taking uh, biology into account yeah so so now we'll go and see that biology and uh, beat the shit out of each other. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so we're gonna do some training now, some sparring, beautiful nature. Good stuff. Thank you. Yes, it's good fun.